This absolute Muppet reporter in Chicago absolutely hates NASCAR and pulled out every stereotype in the book that he could find on the internet. Let's break it down. Welcome back to Break Hard, I'm Matt. This Muppet in question right here, Jim O'Donnell, he posted an article to the Daily Herald, Chicago's suburban newspaper. So you already know that this man is not actually from Chicago. He probably lives in Naperville or Arlington Heights, potentially even Joliet at this point. But he identifies as a Chicagoan because he lives adjacent to a popular area. Well, he posted an article where he is absolutely lambasting NASCAR for being on the streets of Chicago this weekend. And he pulled out every stereotype he could possibly find when he Googled NASCAR stereotypes and tracks in the American Southeast. And and honestly, kind of rude because I'm going to Chicago this weekend, but I'm not going there and stereotyping everything as I approach it. I'm not going to spend my 4th of July weekend in Chicago and being like, oh, I'm so excited for a 4th of July weekend filled with gun violence and murder and one of the most dangerous cities in America. Actually, not one of the most dangerous cities in America, contrary to what people continue to try to tell you. There's certainly dangerous neighborhoods, but not so much the city. And I'm sure Jim wouldn't actually fact check that if, you know, he in fact was going to another city. He would just blatantly say something like that because he does love to stereotype at the end of the day. Jim seems to fancy himself as a bit of an intellectual, which is funny when you read this because it reads exactly like how a boomer would post onto Facebook, which is probably his core audience if we're getting down to it. And he's going to get his clicks out of it because that's what boomers do. They need to read something so that they can also be outraged at something that absolutely does not affect them. Like I said, Jim lives in the suburbs. This race doesn't affect him at all. He's not spending his 4th of July weekend at Grant Park. He's not even spending his 4th of July weekend in Chicago. He's out in the suburbs, distant, somewhere else that's far beyond where this race is actually going to be held at. But again, he only wants to stereotype, so we'll just continue to stereotype as well. I'm excited to go to a city where the point of pride seems to be telling people that it's the Sears Tower, not the Willis Tower, whatever they want to call it now. The fact that they put half a vegetable garden on top of their hot dog, when in all honesty, the only thing that belongs on a hot dog is ketchup and sometimes mustard if you want to put it on that. Or you can come to Cincinnati and have Skyline Chili on your hot dog, which is also acceptable. But the fact that you're putting a pickle spear, a pepper, and what appears to be half a head of lettuce on it, yeah, no, get out of here with that. That's absolutely trash. But again, right, this is a city that's built off of movies like Home Alone. The fact that their airport is one of the worst in the country and they continue to be like, oh, O'Hare is not that bad. O'Hare is actually trash if we get down to it. Midway is somehow even more trash. Your sports teams haven't done anything of merit in quite some time. The 2016 World Series win for the Cubs is actually a fluke. That should have gone to the Cleveland Guardians. They got saved by a rain delay right there. Your, your football team hasn't been able to find a quarterback in nearly 20 years since Rex Grossman led you to the Super Bowl. And since then, you just had a plethora of quarterbacks that couldn't get anything done done at this point. You dye your river green every year and you're like, oh, look how quirky this is. It's not that quirky. You have the name Second City for a reason because you're completely forgotten about. And honestly, you should probably be third or fourth city because New York, Los Angeles, and Miami probably all rank ahead of you on top of places that people actually want to go and move to at this point. Your politics are corrupt. You're the windy city. You have a lake right there. Oh, so fancy. Nothing's like a Chicago summer. Yeah, it's only cool for three months out of the year. The rest of the time, that city absolutely stinks. And then you have to want to talk about the White Sox and the Cubs. The both teams are absolutely horrid this year, but the only thing anybody wants to talk about is how bad the White Sox are, completely forgetting that the Cubs are last in their division. And then you have a movie like Ferris Bueller's Day Off there, and you want to celebrate that. Do we really want to celebrate truancy, Jim? I don't think so. What kind of representation does that send to the kids? Not a very good one, if you ask me. So I say all of this to say maybe you shouldn't stereotype one type of sport just because you don't understand it, because you don't like it. I'm not going to Chicago this weekend looking at stereotypes. I'm going to Chicago this weekend to have a fun time, watch NASCAR race, a pretty unique race, in a city which I've been told is actually really fun. I've only ever been to Chicago in the wintertime. I'm excited to see what it's like in the summertime. But people like Jim, people like Jim just want to sit out in the suburbs and complain about every single little thing that does not affect them. His article is actually laughably bad, too, when we get down to it. So let's break it down a little bit here. He starts off with saying... In fact, it's a shame that the city that quirks can't send something equally futile back to the American Southeast as a sign of acknowledgement. Then perhaps the 24 Sox could play a four-game series at Darlington. That's certain uh, to set the General Lees and Booty Barkers snoozing. First off, calling yourself the city that quirks? Cringy. Don't ever do that. What are you, a 17-year-old girl? Shut up, Jim. You move on to then saying that you're going to send the White Sox down to play a four-game series in Darlington. First off, the people of Darlington, South Carolina, don't give a damn about baseball, so why would you ever want to do that? And if you're sending the White Sox down because they're so bad, you might as well send the Cubs down to play that four-game series with them because they're equally as bad. But because they're from the rich suburbs, you don't want to throw them into the equation right there. You instead want to send the team from the South Side, which is generally poor, down to the American Southeast, which I assume you probably think is also poor. So that's a bad look on you right there. Then you generalize by saying that the General Lees you think everybody that is a NASCAR fan has a rebel flag? I don't have a rebel flag. In fact, I'm not even from the American Southeast. And I'm college educated multiple times. Yeah, so Jim, 
what are you talking about here? You're just stereotyping. And Booty Barker, why is he catching a ricochet shot in this? One of the nicest guys you could ever meet, but you wouldn't know that because you didn't actually do your research and learn anything about the sport. He goes on to say, on Saturday, USA Network will get the Bubba's running the Junior Varsity Loop 110. Sunday, NBC swoops in to present the Grant Park 220, which is actually the Grant Park 165. But if you did your research, you would actually know that, which is a lower figure than the number of people who rioted when Sylvester Stallone... Oh, yeah, my bad. Mid-rant, I said Sylvester Stallone. It's actually Sly Stone. Two very different people when you look at the photos there. My bad for not reading on that one. Didn't show for a free concert at the Historic Green back in 1970. Does Jim think that the race name plus the mileage is the amount of fans that show up i thought he was pretty daft i didn't think he was this daft he then goes on to say i'm just going to skip over some of the nonsense that he says uh, he talks about shane van gisbergen winning last year and he says his average speed was a positively pedestrian 60.2 mile an hour these days low loud riders make it through drive up lanes at raising canes faster First off, if you're trying to get a local reference there, you probably should have used Portillo's because Raising Cane's doesn't, you know, that's everywhere at this point. And in 60.2 mile per hour, it's actually probably faster than your commute from suburban Chicago into Chicago. The drive from Naperville probably never gets above 60 mile an hour for you in the most time, Jim, so it was actually faster than what you think. The race of their tour de farces, residuals from a concept challenge mayor, Lori Lightfoot, was swayed when something less appropriate than a miniature golf course on a crosswind runway at O'Hare. Hopefully the Chicago street race will fizzle up and fly out of our town forever on the next flatbed south. In the meantime, pliable citizens, start your wallets. You elected Lori Lightfoot. Actually, you didn't elect Lori Lightfoot because you don't even live in Chicago. Come on, Jim. If you want to criticize, at least live there when you actually have a vote at this point. But yeah, Lori Lightfoot, she did give NASCAR a sweetheart deal and they absolutely hopped on it because they wanted to have a street race and your mayor gave them a really, really good deal. One that Brandon Johnson had to come in and renegotiate with NASCAR for this year to get an extra $2 million out of them. But I'm sure you didn't do your research, so why would you know that? And then, of course, she throws in a local reference there with the O'Hare uh, miniature golf course. And why would you ever play miniature golf? on a runway at O'Hare. First off, it's too far outside the city. Nobody's going all the way out there unless they absolutely have to. And they're certainly not going out there to play miniature golf. Come on, Jim. So at the end of the day, people like Jim are kind of the worst type of uh, of commentators on NASCAR because they don't know anything about the sport. Their idea of it is straight off of Taldega Nights probably in Days of Thunder. And they think it's just a bunch of good old boys still. And they completely are ignorant to the fact that it takes millions upon millions of dollars to field these race cars for an entire season, that the technology and the engineering behind them would absolutely blow their mind. And this is probably a guy that can't even change the tire on his own car. And now he wants to sit around and criticize the skills of the people that will be racing on the streets of Chicago this weekend. I don't have time for people like Jim out there and he absolutely deserves to get blasted on the internet i saw some people say that they're going to you know not dunk on him and everything and i respect that right like that's one approach to it but if you're going to be this blatantly ignorant about it well then yeah you probably deserve to get dunked on so let me know in the comments what you think like and subscribe to the channel follow me on tiktok at break hard instagram and twitter at break hard blog